All right, guys, welcome back to Coffee and Questions. I want to thank you guys first and foremost, off the bat, 8,000 subscribers. Thanks, guys. Really made me happy today to see that kind of flip over, you know, 7,959 was yesterday and it just climbed to 8,005 today and awesome, completely awesome. All right, that might have been way too big of a shot of whiskey to take. All right, so let's get to some questions. So my first question here comes from a guy named Waylon. I'm going to paraphrase the email because it was actually a long email and we went back and forth, but Waylon. He started the job three years ago working for a flooring company that actually um, distributes flooring. So hardwood floors, laminate floors, rugs, pads, all that stuff. Really big place from how he describes it. Uh, 30 employees plus himself, plus a whole office crew, sales crew, all that stuff. So over the three years, he has become the head of safety for the plant. Let's just call it a plant. And just this year, after he's taken this job, because this job was created because of OSHA coming in and saying with this many employees, everybody has to wear safety shoes. And because of the going up and down in the forklift, everybody has to wear fall protection and everybody has to have on a safety vest. So to sum up his email, what he basically was asking me is now that they're giving the guys safety shoes and they're giving the guys the safety vests, and all this stuff, nobody wants to use it. Nobody wears it. He's on top of his guys all the time in order to put on their safety shoes and wear their safety vests. They all have lockers. They can leave their shoes, as he says in, in the email. So he just asked my advice on the whole deal and how to get the guys to buy the safety shoes. They had a shoe truck come out the first time. One of the big names came out there for his city, sold all the guys' shoes, and nobody wore them the next day. Everybody claimed they were uncomfortable and whatnot. Part of the question is, what do I think is going to be a more comfortable shoes for all the guys? Like I said, it was a very long email. So to get to an answer. So Waylon, you're the safety director. You got 30 employees under you. Plus you're the liaisons between the office and sales and your workers getting the orders out. Somebody places the order. Somebody takes the order. Your guys get them out. You guys aren't wearing safety shoes. So you got an allowance. So my personal opinion here would be to not, to not have the shoe trucks come out anymore. I like shoe trucks. Trust me. I've, I've been on many, done many of many of sales on shoe trucks. It's a great thing, especially if you got a good personality and you can talk to people. But most of the time, the shoe truck guys, they have, I don't want to say they have bad personalities. I don't want to say they have the personalities of wet socks. But those guys are kind of like, if you're a worker, they treat the workers like crap. And if you're an office guy, they kiss your ass. Where if the worker needs two or three safety shoes a year, the office guy could get by with one every five years. So why not treat the guy better who's going to use more of your product? Just my own philosophy on selling safety shoes like that. But that's not what I want to get to here, Waylon. What I want to get to is... If you're going to have a stipend of what you're going to pay your employees, the best thing you could do is to find a retailer near you that has a nice selection of shoes that understands shoes and that is willing to open up an account with your accounts receivable with your accounting department. By doing that, your guys will go and pick out their shoes when they need them because some guys are going to need two pairs a year. Some guys are going to need one pair a year. And if you can just keep them in their shoes and there's a place where they can go and pick them up, it's not the worst thing in the world. So my next suggestion is this, not to drink whiskey. No, drink some whiskey, enjoy it. To decide on three styles, if you're gonna have somebody come in or if they're gonna go somewhere, three styles that they can pick from. And what's really important is that everybody in the plant has to wear their safety shoes. Even the office people, if the office, if the receptionist never walks back to where you guys are working, moving flooring and rugs and all that stuff, if she never walks back there, or he never walks back there, they don't need them. But the boss, you, you're in charge of safety. You got to have those shoes on every day. So when your guy says to you, my shoes are uncomfortable and they hurt my feet, he can look down at your feet and see he's got this, that you have the same shoes on. 
there's really nothing to argue about there unless he bought the wrong size. The other thing, if there's a big boss, if there's a really big boss, tell him your problem. Talk to him. See if he's willing to wear the safety shoes around the plant too. If he's willing to do it and the workers see that the big guy is wearing the shoes, then there should really be no problems. When it comes to safety vests and fall protection, if the guys are supposed to wear the fall protection and it's just not there on the forklift, like most of the time there sh it should be on your, your scissor lift or whatever you're using to get up to the upper shelves, you should have the fall protection there. It should be one unit on there. Not every guy needs his own. If I'm not mistaken, that's kind of how the whole OSHA thing works on the machines. I could be completely wrong on that, that's something I really don't know much about when it comes to how OSHA works around equipment as much as does just the shoes and whatnot. But just make sure it's always there. Safety vests, instead of giving the guy one vest, give the guy two vests. Make sure there's always one around and maybe just keep a few extras at your desk so that when you see a guy without one, throw him a vest, say, get your vest on. Or if the guy forgets his vest, instead of allowing him to wear lime green or orange, make him wear a pink vest. Most guys don't forget of their vest when you make them wear a pink vest. I've seen it in a few plants before where the safety directors have done it and it really just snipped that right in the ass. So, Waylon, I hope some of these suggestions help out. Um, thank you for subscribing, thank you for the email, and thank you for spreading the word to your workers on you know, what safety shoes are good and what not. That really helps out. I can see that, you know, I mean, thanks. You know, it really helps out. Okay, it was all emails. I'm reading everything from emails, no comments from the YouTube channel this time, just emails because both of these emails were pretty good. All right, so the next one. I just had it, there it is. Okay, Chris from Michigan asks, debate between him and his friends. 600, and, 600 grams of insulation, 1200 grams of insulation. Upper Michigan, which one's going to be better? Okay, well, guys, uh, all depends on what the weather is. Remember, my whole thing about insulation is not so much in the boot unless you're standing on ice for hours on end, ice fishing. Yes, you want 1,200 grams of insulation. You want to be a full inch above the ice. You want wool socks. You want lots of scotch or whiskey. You want a fire. You want to have just these amenities that are going to make the whole ice fishing experience fun. Working out on ice, moving around, not sitting there watching a hole, moving around, 600 grams, a nice felt insole, and some socks, in my opinion, some really good wool socks and liners. You should be good if you're moving around. If you have to sit still, if you're in a stationary position for longer than three hours, in below freezing temperatures, then yes, a thousand grams, 1200 grams. I've seen some stuff out there just recently by one of the outdoor companies. They're doing 2,200 grams of insulation inside a boot. Yeah, where are you going with that thing? The other thing you asked in your email was Pack boots, what do I think of them? Okay, so what do I think of pack boots? So the insulation question is answered. 600 grams, wool socks, liners, wool felt insoles. You can get them from Servus, you can get them from Lacrosse, you can get them from numerous numbers of companies. If you're interested in wool felt liners, you've never heard of them before, shoot me over an email. I'll send you a couple of links so you can see what I'm talking about. Pack boots. Pack boots, I love them, you love them. Sorel, come on, known forever. Sorel has been like the quintessential pack boot out there for working sports, uh, shoreline fishing when it's cold up in Canada. Sorel boots, they have always been the top of the line. Sorel, yes, plummeted. Their quality, what they're about is just, it's crap. It's just for girls. It's for girls that go from their Land Rover to the Apple store. Guess who wears Sorel today? It's not really built for us anymore. It's not built for outdoors guys. It's not built for working guys. It's just, it's crap. But companies like Terra, Servus, um, let's see, who's the other one? You got Terra, you got Servus, you got Muck Boots, which are pretty much just like pack boots without the liner. Um, 
Oh my God, what the hell is that company's name? <laughs> I can't believe I'm doing this. I got a brain fart. Uh, oh, Baffin from Canada. Baffin's another one. Really good extreme work boots that can, you know, really insulate your foot. So pack boots are great. The, the thing with pack boots is you're going to get warm. You're going to sweat. And at the end of your day or in the middle of the day, if you're fortunate enough, if you're smart enough to pick up a second set of liners to pull out your wet liners and put dry liners in and then get you through the rest of the day, say like six hours in those things, and you got to pull another six hour shift. You guys that got to plow, you guys that are out there uh, doing snow removal, having that dry insert to put back in your pack boots makes all the difference. Dry socks makes all the difference. When you're sweaty and you're cold, forget about it. You're done for. So if you can change out, if you can get your socks changed, get those liners changed, pack boots are really great. Pack boots are not all that great for heavy duty work. A really good strong insulated boot with a really good shank, even though a lot of pack boots come with steel shanks, but like a quarry with uh, 600 grams of insulation or like a, boon, a boondock from Timberland Pro with the 1,000 grams. So you've got a good digging sole, you've got a good heavy duty leather, you've got some rubber on the toe, you've got a good insulated waterproof boot there that is kind of like a mimic of a pack boot. But pack boots do have their place. Snow removal, great place. So, Chris, Michigan, pack boots, excellent. I like them. If you guys are still arguing about it, I'm sorry. I like pack boots. Um, insulation, 600 grams, in my opinion, is plenty of insulation. All right, so that's two questions. I ran a little long on them. I understand, but they are pretty in-depth questions. Uh, let's get to this merchandise that I got here. So I've got couple of new boots here. First thing, Kodiak. Kodiak footwear. Kind of uh, fashion dress. Not heritage. Not uh, cheap. I don't know. Uh, cheap Timberland. You know how you see the, the street guys wearing Timberland. But just a really nice looking casual dress boot. Insulated, waterproof, it's, it's a dress boot. It's a going out in the middle of winter boot with something that's not a work boot. Nice styling, nice details all the way through. I will have a full review of the Kodiak as time progresses, but I just got these and I just really liked them and I just wanted to show them off. I'll have some uh, photos that go up on Instagram later on this week into next weekend of this boot, just so you can see some of this detailing, the really nice welt. The uh, sew down leather welt, to, just the way it's all put together. It's a good looking boot. It's a good looking casual boot. So, Kodiak. Nice stuff. Now, Condor, and I've done Condor already. I've done some work boots from them, some um, steel toe or comp toe work boots from them. I did two reviews on the Condors. It's great stuff. Really nice soles. The way they put their soles together is something else. The direct attach process, the compound on the soles, soft and bouncy. So this is the Murph. I should make sure this is called the Murph. This is the Murphy, not the Murph. Uh, this is the black model. They sent me two pairs. They sent me a black and they sent me, which I've been wearing now for two weeks, pretty much almost every day. That's the desert model. And you see that? You see that pocket that holds your boot knife? To me, that's kind of the selling part. The other part is the fact that you can tuck your laces up inside the tongue and there's nothing bouncing around. So they both have those features. The black has it and this desert has it. So I will be doing a full review on these boots very soon because um, I've been wearing this one. It doesn't show a lot of wear or anything because they haven't really done anything. I did two drywalling projects with this brush them off, clean them off. Nothing really got stained into them. Like none of the dust, it kind of cleaned off really nice, but they're super comfortable. I was a little weary, to be honest with you. I was a little weary with these really soft soles, the way they build these soles for an everyday tactical type boot. It makes sense on a work boot, but for something like this, where you guys are doing maneuvers in these, you're doing running gun type stuff, it's a little weary, it is really awesome. It is a really strong compound and is super comfortable. It doesn't lose its resiliency. It's really nice. So, 
Condor, the Murphy. I will get to this. I should probably take off my other boot now so I'm not all lopsided. So now you're probably wondering what's in the big box. Is it shoes? Is it something else? So guys, in this box is something that I've wanted since the first time I seen it. Inside here is from a is a device from a company called Future Motion Incorporated. So if you haven't heard of Future Motion Incorporated, they make this device. And this device is an electronic mode of transportation. Now it might seem silly, but oh, it's a one wheel. Now, I really find this thing interesting. I find this mode of transportation, the distance, you get a seven mile on one charge, you get the top speed, they call 17 miles an hour. I've seen kids out there that are getting 25 on them. I find this thing really interesting. And that's why I've wanted one since first generation. When I saw them on, not Patreon, but the other service where you pay people to get their idea off the ground, you become the part of the backer to the company. Like GoFundMe, something like whatever that, whatever that thing was where they had it, I was really excited. At the time, I was like, oh, let's see what happens. Second generation, one wheel plus. Thing is, it just looks like it's going to be awesome. Looks like it's going to be fun. So I picked one up. I have to say, this thing's heavy. I was really, really surprised. Stickers. This is the best part. Boot companies need to start doing this stuff. If you're a boot company, put stickers in every single box. Put a sticker so a guy can put it on his hard hat, on his toolbox. We're guys. We love stickers. We love you know, putting them on our water bottles, doing stuff with stickers. Back to the one wheel. So I was surprised at just how heavy this thing is. And it makes sense. I mean, it's got some bulk to it. Yes, that's a go-kart wheel. That's a go-kart wheel on a platform. And yes, you stand on that and go. So I know, it seems really crazy. Boot guy, this isn't a pair of boots. But where I see this thing being really practical for me is I have to take the train a lot. I have to take the bus a lot. I have to go down into the city. And I'm from Chicago, and if you drive into the city in Chicago, you're, I'm not gonna say that you're a fool, but you're just looking to sit in traffic and do nothing. So. This thing will help me get around and hopefully it turns out to be as cool as I think it is. So if you got any questions about it, remember just email me the questions. Uh, as the weeks progress, I'll have a lot of information about it. Um, you know, it is, it's supposed to mimic snowboarding, surfing, and skateboarding, but not with ollies and 360 flips and kit flips and things like that, but more about the older way of skating where it was more about carving pools and kind of turning and kind of like downhill skating it kind of has that whole thing of mimicking because you can set it up to have like loose trucks and whatnot so that's really really looking forward to it so that's that and uh remember hit that subscribe button 8,000 subscribers thank you guys and if you should have any questions about footwear, work boots, safety gear, work clothing, I got a lot of clothing reviews coming out this year. Uh, a lot of stuff from Carhartt, some stuff from L.L. Bean that just really works well as real work gear, as base layering stuff, as just kind of uh, where you can take fishing gear and really turn it into good work gear because some of the fishing gear is made a lot better than some of the work stuff, a lot stronger and comes with better guarantees. So I got a lot of stuff like that coming out. Sweatshirts, Arbor Wear, sweatshirts from Carhartt, uh, some new overalls, and hopefully a couple new pairs of pants from some new American-made companies. Some more reviews coming out from that. So got a lot of stuff coming up. So just an update. Coffee and questions. 8,000 subscribers. I've had a few shots of whiskey, and things are good. All right, guys, until the next time, I'm the Boot Guy. Thanks a lot for watching.